So digging through the Linux driver stack tends to reveal a good bit, and recently it has shown that AMD has already started developing drivers for Navi on that platform. The latest bit of code shows Navi to be continuing the trend of GCN-based GPUs. Pharonix recently discovered references to Navi while monitoring various GitHub repositories, and the AMD GPU LLVM backend is now seeing GFX 1010, and with GFX 900 being Vega, GFX 1010 could only be Navi. Pharonix claims Navi support is unlikely to be seen within the upcoming Linux 5.2 kernel and may be held back until the Linux 5.3 kernel release. The current release of Windows for Linux 5.3 stable is the September release. The Linux 5.3 kernel may be the first Linux kernel bringing mainstream Navi support, and assuming Navi releases sometime between May and July, we may not see much support for these GPUs until Linux 5.3 is released. Until then, Linux users may be required to jump through several hoops to get their shiny new Navi GPUs working properly. We had previously seen Navi being referred to as a post-GCN design, meaning that it could potentially bypass the 4096 stream processor limit of the GCN architecture, but this simply will not be the case. In the past, the claims have been made that the GCN architecture would require significant tweaks to allow for additional stream processors, where a completely new architecture would have increased appeal. GCN had been designed while 28 nanometer was the cutting edge, and it has not been tailored to take advantage of the benefits of a smaller 7 nanometer process node. GCN is a pretty memory-starved design as well, requiring the use of more expensive HBM and HBM2 for more tangible performance gains. Though it has been reported that Navi will take advantage of GDDR6, this bandwidth benefit can be seen when comparing Radeon RX Vega 64 to Radeon 7. While both GPUs are based on Vega architecture, with the Radeon 7 clock slightly higher, but with over double the memory bandwidth, shows the Radeon 7 leaving the Vega 64 in its dust. At this point in time, we do not know a whole lot about AMD's next generation Arcturus microarchitecture, but we do know its GPU naming schemes will be returning to a simpler, more familiar form, similar to the way Fiji referred to the R9 Fury GPUs and Hawaii referred to the R9 290 GPUs. Arcturus is believed to be based upon 7 nanometer plus. So speaking of Radeon 7, did you know that people were still mining? It appears that AMD has taken the performance crown for Ethereum mining once again with the Radeon 7. The Radeon 7 manages to overtake Polaris, Fiji, and the Titan V, as well as Turing all at once. But will it make mining profitable again? Out of the box in stock configuration, the Radeon 7 managed to pull off a whopping 90 mega hash per second and nearly triple the performance of the stock RX Vega 64, which is 29% faster than the Radeon Pro Duo and beats the Titan V by quite a large margin. The Radeon Vega 64 is quite a bit behind the Radeon Pro Duo and the Pro Duo trails slightly behind the Titan V in terms of raw hash rate at stock configurations. After tweaking the Radeon 7, it is possible to achieve a hash rate between 90 and 100 mega hash per second, according to Voscoin over at Bitcoin Talk. The following configuration brings the 91 mega hash per second and at 251 watts. This configuration provides an efficiency improvement of 21% over the stock 319 watt power consumption. Compared to the Titan V, the Radeon 7 is a much more compelling option. The Radeon 7 is immensely cheaper, now available for about $680 to $700, whereas the Titan V is still within the $3,000 range. And the Radeon 7 achieves a higher hash per watt compared to Polaris, Radeon 7 is a more efficient option. The Radeon 7 draws less power than three RX 570s or 580s and will occupy single PCIe slot rather than three, enabling higher performance density and mining rigs and less heat output. As for the Radeon Pro Duo, for miners interested in mining multiple coins, the dual GPU design may be desirable. With a dual GPU, miners have the ability to dedicate one GPU to, say, Ethereum and the other one to XMR, making it a dynamic card. The Radeon 7's increased hash rate is largely due to the massive improvement in memory bandwidth over Vega 10. Just like we discussed earlier, the RX Vega 64 has a memory bandwidth of 484GB per second and 8GB of HPM2, whereas the Radeon 7 boasts a memory bandwidth of 1TB per second and 16GB of HPM2, and the RX Vega 64 has a TDP of 295 watts compared to the Radeon 7's 300. 
making the Radeon 7 a much more efficient card at the same power consumption. The Radeon 7 has a higher maximum temperature output, however. So are you concerned about Navi being GCN still? If anything, it'll make it a bit easier to slot performance-wise as we find out final core counts and core clock speeds. And well, are you into mining or is mining completely dead? Love to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.